What's up guys, GT here and welcome back to the channel once again. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Guitar Rig 5 to dial in a Joe Satriani inspired sort of a tone more from his extremist album era because personally, I think that's one of his best albums ever made. But before we do that, I want to give a quick shout out to David Shankel who's made a contribution towards my channel via my PayPal account. David, I hope I got your name right. And in case you're wondering how you can support the channel and also get a shout out in my future videos, check the links in the description box below. And of course, goes without saying, please do make sure you subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything at all. Before we go ahead and actually do the dialing in process, I want to play you some tone samples as to how the guitar is going to end up sounding by the end of this video. So check these out. I hope you like what you hear. Let's jump into Guitar Rig 5 and let's start dialing it in. Alright guys, so I've got Guitar Rig 5 in front of me and at the moment I've got nothing in there. It's just a blank preset with just a noise gate in there. You know why the noise gate we need it because we're going to dial in a high gain preset. It's going to help us tone that noise a little bit down as well. What I'm playing is my Ernie Ball Music Man JP15 guitar enough reviews about this guitar fantastic guitar i've got the ernie ball regular slinky strings on there i am on the bridge pickup and volume is going to be on full tone is going to be on full as far as signal chain is concerned i'm going from my guitar into my moto m4 sound card which is then going directly into my DAW. what you're going to be hearing is absolutely 100 percent coming from guitar rig 5 there is no post processing happening whatsoever so as far as the sound of the guitar is concerned right now this is how it sounds <laughs> Let's start dialing in block by block so that we can achieve the sort of tone we want. So the first thing that comes to your mind is obviously the amp after the guitar. So Joe Satriani has been known to use uh, his own signature Marshall amp, which is a JS series amp uh, inspired out of the JVM series, I believe. But he did have a small sort of a stint with PV as well. But we're going to use a Marshall amp in this case. Now, in terms of the Marshall amps, there are a few available here. I think the Jump or the Plex, these are all sort of Marshall sort of amps implementations. But when it comes to high gain tones, I think the Lead 800 amp kind of suits really well, in my opinion. So let's drag that out and put it up in the signal chain right after the noise gate. And we're going to keep everything at stock and let's hear how this sounds. <laughs> Again, sounds fairly good enough for a crunch sort of a tone, but obviously we need a lot of more grain and a lot of more other things to make it sound close to what you heard in the beginning of this video. So let's start doing that one by one. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the mash cabinet. Again, I'm not saying it's not good, but I want to use something which is slightly more advanced, which is a Control Room Pro. You've seen me doing this before in the previous video. I did a John Petrucci style uh, sort of a guitar rig 5 video as well if you haven't checked that out i'll put that link in the description box as well go make sure you go ahead and check that out as well so what the control room pro allows you to do is mix and match different cabs and it allows you to mic them as well which sort of is not possible using the matched cabinet so we're going to use two cabs we're not going to go at that extreme and use eight cabs to be honest but we're going to dial in using two cabs now I'm going to use a 4x12 uh, UK cab, which is again, I think, a Marshall sort of an implementation in the Guitar Rig 5. So the first amp I'm going to, first cabinet I'm going to choose is 4x12 UK 60s green. I think Satrian is also known to have one of the 1960B cabinets as his favorite cabinets back in the time. So we're going to choose something around there. I'm going to mac it up with a condenser 87 and I'm not going to touch anything else here. The second cab I'm going to add is another 4x12 UK, but I'm going to go 70s white this time, and I'm going to mic this up with actually a ribbon 160 mic this time. It's slightly different from what we did in the previous uh, cabinet. Uh, as far as the amp is concerned, we need definitely more gain, so I'm going to tweak the controls. Now, as far as the controls are concerned, uh, these are not super sensitive, so you know, dial it close to what I am going to dial the numbers are the knobs are quite small and hard to see the numbers when you dial them so 
get somewhere around the ballpark where I'm dialing in and you should be good. But you know, if you want specific numbers, they'll show up on the screen as well. So for the master, I think 8.86 or something like that is good enough. For the preamp, I'm gonna push it up to around eight. It's gonna add more gain. Uh, for the base, I'm gonna bring it down to around five. And this is again all by ear. We need more mids to make it thick and not so ice picky. So we're gonna push up the mids to around eight. Treble, again, I'm gonna bring it down to around 6.3. No, don't want the uh, tone to be too sharp. Presence, also, I'm gonna bring it down to around four. Now with that done, this is how it sounds. <laughs> That sounds really cool and it's sort of sounding again with a lot of more gain but uh, it's not enough in my opinion to have uh, for a lead sort of a tone so we're going to add more gain now this amp has a boost switch kind of built in you can trigger that up and it's going to give you more gain but i did something different what i like to do is add a th08 sort of a drive pedal in front of the amp which is going to tighten up your low end as well and it's also going to give you the boost that you need so let's go ahead and add the screamer which is sort of a from the color it kind of reminds me of a th08 drive pedal so i am sure it's pretty much an implementation of that uh, the volume i think i'm going to keep it around 3.7 oh these knobs are so hard to turn <laughs> to get them to exact uh, tone i'm going to bring it down to around, uh, to around 7.3 somewhere around there is fine drive i'm going to keep it around five not too much drive that that sounds good enough to me so the next thing i want to add is an uh, shelving of our in the eq so that you know we're gonna cut off some of that top end. If you hear with headphones, you're gonna hear that uh, it's sort of causing a little bit of a fizz in there. So we're gonna chop that off using an EQ as well. But before the EQ, let's go ahead and add some chorus as well because the chorus is also something that's gonna smoothen the tone a bit as well. In terms of the chorus, I always like the ensemble or the ensemble, the way you wanna call it. Let's add the ensemble after the Control Room Pro. Chorus, I'm gonna bring it down. The rate, I'm gonna bring it down to a 0.7, as low as we can so that we can don't get too much chorus in there. Uh, and then if you expand the actual component, you will find more smaller knobs in there to tweak, which are gonna make your life even more harder. But what I wanna change here is just bring the mix down to around 11% so that you know we don't have too much chorus in there let's go back to the eq i like to add a shelving eq up there so that we can tame some of that top end uh 9800 or 9200 i think is where i kind of aimed my eq shelving to be let's bring it around there yeah that should be fine that's i'm just cutting out some of the phases in the top end as well so with that done this is how it sounds <laughs> That sounds really cool. Uh, we're making good progress, so let's add more things which are gonna make it a characteristic lead preset, which is gonna be the delay and the reverb. For delay, what I used is the delay man. Uh, where are you delay? It's always tricky to find. I wish there was a search option. I think they've added that in Guitar Rick 6. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think uh, finding it much would be much easier if we had sort of a search functionality. Here we are, delay man. Let's add that in. I think all I did in this case is bring the overall mix down to around 23%. I don't want too much delay happening in there. Time, I kept it there. Again, based on your taste, feedback, depth, all as per the defaults. Tweak it to your taste. Now, reverb, I added a studio reverb. Again, I'm not gonna tweak this too much. Mix is around 40%, I think, pre-delay and all that stuff. I'm gonna keep it default. So with that done, this is how it sounds. <laughs> That sounds really cool and it's getting us closer to the tone but if you've heard and if you've studied Joe Satri and his tone a bit like I have you'll find that always in his tone there is a bit of a nasal touch 
more like a fixed war position almost happening but it's not actually a war if you're looking for the right term it's i think it's called a cocked war sort of an effect where it almost sounds like a war is in a fixed position but the effect is quite subtle it's not just having a war block in your signal chain and you know having it fixed the trick to do that and you can do this pretty much in any sort of a hardware or a software unit you have is to add a filter block right in the beginning of your signal chain and boost certain frequencies. The filter block can really help you achieve a sort of a cocktail sort of an effect. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is add a filter block right up in the start of the signal chain. Again, I'm gonna try and find the filter. The peak filter works really cool. I'm gonna add it right before the, uh, the tube screamer and after the noise gate, obviously. Now, choose your frequencies carefully here. Different frequencies can cause different effects. I think between 8K and 12K is a good range for you to kind of boost those upper mids to get that sort of uh, a you know, cocked war sort of an effect. Dry wet, I'm gonna bring it down to around 33%. It's, I don't want the effect too harsh. Obviously, I want it subtle, but I want it there. And the frequency, in my case, I think it works really well is around 9K. Somewhere around there works really well. Now hear this part out again. It's there, it's subtle, and you can probably try and switch it off and or rewind the video and hear back the part where I played without it. You can definitely hear some difference happening in there. Now, talking about war, Satriani definitely uses WAW in most of his lead tones and you can hear him in pretty much almost every track on that record, The Extremist. And if you have an actual expression pedal, feel free to use that. But if you're poor like me and you don't have an expression pedal, I'll show you a way how you can actually mimic the WAW pedal and actually create a WAW sort of an effect which kind of automates itself and gives you a WAW. So first things first, let's go ahead and add the WAW. What you can do is find the WAW. There are different WAWs available in the Guitar Rec 5, but I think the WAW WAW works really well in this case. Let's add it after the filter and before the screamer. And the moment you do that, you're gonna find this sort of a slider to move the WAW in the open or the close position. But what's gonna happen is obviously you're gonna need your mouse to do that and it's gonna get really tricky to play alongside as well because you need both your hands to play. So uh, what you can do is, and this is a trick that you can apply in almost every situation, no matter what modular you have or the DAW you have, what you can do is add some sequencing tools or an LFO to actually to automate the WAW as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and add the LFO here after the WAW. Doesn't matter where you add it, I'm gonna add it after the WAW. Uh, what you can do now is the moment you hover over this LFO, it's gonna say assign, drag this guy up. But before you drag it up, let's bring the wall to the center position and I'll tell you why this matters. If you don't, it's not gonna go up and down full way. So let's add the LFO to the actual wall slider. What that's gonna do is start automating the actual wall up and down effect. So you can see that slider is moving up and down automatically. That's based on the rate that you set of the LFO and you can actually tame the rate down a little bit so that it's a little slower or faster. I think I like it around uh, 0.57, I think. Slightly faster, that way it's, it's slightly faster than usual. You can actually sync it to the tempo as well and it will automatically do the trick for you. With that done, this is how it's done. <laughs> Now, in my opinion, that's getting a little too sharp and a little too ice picky. We need to tame the wall a little bit more. And that's why I chose this wall because it allows you to tweak the wall options a little bit more and make it suitable to your ears. What you can do is tweak the min and the max frequency of the wall so that it's not that harsh and it's subtle, but it's still there. So what I did, again, very small knobs, hard to manipulate, bear with me. I'm gonna try and do this. So min, bring it down to 147 and max, bring it down from 2600 to around 1100. That way it's not that hard. Uh, had it, uh, almost, yeah, somewhere around there, uh, probably a little bit lower, I think, yeah, somewhere around there works absolutely fine. Now here this part. <laughs> Sounds really cool. How about this part? That 
that sounds really cool too as well some songs without the wah sound really cool like if you want to play a motorcycle driver i'll switch the wah off <laughs> I think that sounds really cool. Turn down your volume knob and play the part from New Blues. <laughs> I think it has some war in there but it sounds cool nonetheless so that's pretty much it guys that's the tone i wanted to share with you guys hopefully you guys enjoyed the styling in session and hopefully the tone sounds somewhere closer or somewhat similar on your gear as well i'd love to hear some demos please put your links down below if you want to now i know the first thing you're gonna ask is if you're watching this video where can i download these presets now in my opinion, it's always better if you dial it in along with me in the video, watch the video as many times as you want to. What that's going to enable you to do is also learn along the way and also you'll help you to tweak the preset a lot better than just downloading it and saying, oh my God, this doesn't sound right at all to my, to my ears. So make sure you dial the preset along with me in the video. But still, if you want to share the preset with other folks, please go ahead and do so. Upload it somewhere. The first person to comment the links in the comment section below will get their comment pinned so that you get some visibility as well. And, you know, just like always, make sure you give the video a like and also your comment as to how the tone is sounding below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. There's plenty and plenty of tone in the channel. I do have an AxeFX uh, unit as well. I primarily create presets using the AxeFX too. But if you want to check out some more tone, head over to the channel as well. And until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you stay safe, guys. Keep rocking. Cheers. Bye-bye.